Road Rash 2, the winner of the competition gets a leather jacket. Sonic 2, the first chance for the public to play the game. What do you think of Sonic 2? I think it's wicked. Have you played Sonic 2? Yeah. You have? What did you think? That's brilliant. Give me five, Sonic. And Tails, well, how do you do? All right. Bizarre, quite bizarre. For me, it was time to attend the big event. In the last few weeks, thousands of people all over Great Britain have been battling for the title National Computer Games Champion and the top prize of £10,000. We're now down to the last two, and here they are. Alan Brett from Nottingham and Tony Eaton from Stafford. Gentlemen, can I ask you first, to get to the standard, how much blooming playing do you do? Uh, about four hours a day, sometimes more. Four hours a day, what about yourself? Been recently doing about five hours a day. You play loads of games, what's your favourite? PGA Tour Golf on the Mega Drive. Alan? Um, Street Fighter 2 on the Super NES. And if you were the champion and won £10,000, what would you do with the money? I'd put it in the bank and get the interest. Very wise, and yourself? Uh, I'd get a season ticket to the Wolves first and then a Mega CD. Three, two, one! Oh! The lads have to play three rounds. The first game is Lemmings 2. This is the first time anybody's seen the game. Alan wins that round and goes on to win the second round playing Sonic 2. Now it's all down to Street Fighter 2 for the grand finale. taking away a cheque for £10,000 and the title National Computer Games Championship 1992. Give a round of applause to Alan. <laughs> Chaos has just overtaken Earl's Court as one of the WWF wrestlers has just arrived. The big fella himself, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. WWF promoting a new game on the SNES. Crusher Crane there. Since the show, we've had some bad news and some good news about Lemmings 2. The bad news is that it slipped. It won't be available until February. But the good news is it will have an exclusive sneak preview on Bad Influence next week. But now for some more games reviews. First up is Micro Machines. It's a plug-through cart, which means you've got to plug another game into it to make it work. Getting it in is hard enough, and getting it out is a nightmare. But is it any good? It's an overhead race game based on the Micro Machine models. You can choose to be one of 12 characters, each with different driving skills. Here to battle it out are Morgan, who's playing Super Cool Spider, and Robin, who's playing Dwayne the Unpredictable Genius. This is a really interesting game, because you race around different rooms in the house. I'm on a, we're on the billiard, billiard table at the moment. I'm, I'm a really um, erratic genius, and occasionally I get these brilliant bursts of speed. I'm just so super cool. I'll take this game with no problems. It holds no horrors for me at all. You know, I'm just in there. Here we are playing a different game of drafts from the normal. I've just won um, a bonus point. I got at least one screen away from my opponent. Ah, pure, pure that, that was. On this level, we're in tanks and we're firing at each other by pressing both buttons together. I can use tactics on this but you can only use it once before your player uh, works out. Ha, I got you. Oh, very sly. You'll not get away, though. Perfect shot ah. coming up. Ah, I've got you. Nah, that's cheating, that was. I'd say this was quite an average game. And one of the big problems for me is that the, the earlier levels are far too hard. The thing that bugs me about it is it gets very samey after a very short time. It's not recommended. It's an unusual game, it's quite good, but I wouldn't want to play it over and over again because it's pretty boring. Micro Machines is a good idea, but it gets boring very quickly. The two-player mode gives it a bit of life. And the scores for Micro Machines, the boys gave it an average score, 3 out of 5, and the girls also gave it 3 out of 5. Next is Nigel Mansell's World Championship on the Amiga. It's a strange irony that this game should be released just as Nigel bows out of Formula One racing altogether. Bad timing, perhaps? Here's Claire to test the circuits. I like this game, it's really good. The graphics are really, are really brilliant. You can see the hands moving, it's like being in a real racing car. This is England now, and as usual, it's raining. 
Luckily, you can choose your tyres to match the conditions. You can have wet, soft or hard. I'd recommend wet for when it's raining. You can also choose auto or manual gears. I like the tight corners. It's good that if you hit something, you still carry on. It slows your speed down, though. The only thing I don't like about it is that it takes ages to load. If you haven't already bought a racing sim, this is a good one to get. I'd recommend this to my dad, and he's quite fussy about his games. Mansell's had a big build-up, but don't believe the hype. There's too many of these kind of games already out, and this is not the best of the bunch. Just don't waste your money on it. Racing sims aren't my favourite game, and in my opinion, this one's pretty boring. It's just ordinary. There's not much to recommend, Nigel Mansell. The graphics are slow and jerky, there's very little trackside detail, and there's not enough room on the road to overtake. And the scores for Nigel Mansell's World Championship. The boys gave it a poor two out of five, but the girls liked it. They gave it four out of five. Right, keyboard creeps. Throw away those biros that have four different colours and pay attention. On the title screen of Adventure Island on the Game Boy, press up, down, up, down, shake it all about. No, sorry. Right, left, right, left, A, B, A, B. All your levels are then listed on the screen. Fancy an adventure, Andy? Not with you, thanks. I was sitting in the Bad Influence office the other week when this computer disc landed on my desk. I stuffed it into my machine and this is what came out. A high-tech way of getting publicity for a new film called, not surprisingly, Sneakers. To get this far, I had to enter the password C-Tech Astronomy. But I don't know the password for these other levels, so it won't let me in. Look, all it'll say is, access denied, try the character dossier. All I can get at the moment are these rather dull biographies of the actors in the film. There, for example, is Robert Redford, and if you go through, you can have everything you ever wanted to know about Sidney Poitier. Fascinating. The film is released tomorrow. It's about a group of high-tech hackers, the Sneakers, who are hired to test security systems. In this clip, they're trying to get government protection without giving away their hideout. I'm going to bounce this call through nine different relay stations throughout the world and off two satellites. It'll be the hardest trace they've ever heard. Now, this will measure stress in the voice of the person on the other end of the line. Not as accurate as a polygraph, but for today's purposes, it'll do. Who is this, please? It's my dime. I'll ask the questions. Who are you? I'd say my name is Mr. Abbott. True. They made the second leg. Mr. Abbott, are you interested in Sea Tech astronomy? I'm interested in all kinds of astronomy. Cute. They've got the satellite in Tokyo. These guys are good. We've got about 20 seconds, Bish. If I come in with what I know, can you guarantee my safety? Do you have the item? 15 seconds. Can you guarantee my safety? Where is the item? Can you guarantee my safety? Five seconds. Yes, I can guarantee your safety. Fish, he's lying. Hang up, they've almost got us. He's lying. Hang up, Fish. He's lying, he's lying. Hang up. Exciting stuff, eh? Now, I know the password for the next level is an anagram of C-Tech Astronomy, but I'm not very good at anagrams. Let me see. Scary motto scene? Scary. Last week's competition prize was four of these supervisions with loads of games. We asked you the names of the two droids in Star Wars, and the answer was, of course, C-3PO and R2-D2. This week's competition prize is a Game Gear with TV tuner, and the question is, what is the name of the cowboy outlaw played by Robert Redford in a movie? Sorry, necessary motto. I'm sure it's necessary motto. Answers on a postcard or stuck down envelope to the usual Bad Influence address, which you will find in the Data Blast, to reach us by next Monday, please. And don't forget, the Bad Influence magazine is in the shops from Saturday. It is necessary motto. Saturday morning, 9.25, What's Up Docs on. Grateful for your company for that. Failing that, back here for Bad Influence next week. Ta-ra. See ya.